Welcome, dear students, to today's English class. Uh, this is our first class after our holidays in English. Uh, in today's English class, uh, we go to a literary reader. In literary uh, reader, uh, lesson one, dictative number 30, written by L. M. Swenson. Um, uh, the famous five, Nancy Drew, the boy Sherlock Holmes, and Encyclopedia Brown have something in common. They are all fictional detectives who are children. Yet another young detective is the hero of this story. This is a, the name itself shows it as a detective story. So we are going to see that story before uh, I'm going to explain the story for you. Uh, we will carefully follow a reading of this unit. I will play uh, a reading of this unit for you. Afterwards, we will see in detail this, this story. I hope all of you are ready to enjoy this story. Here comes your story. Detective number 30 by L.M. Swenson. John stood looking up and down the street. He was unhappy. His friend Billy had gone to the dentist's with his mother and John could not think of anything interesting to do just by himself. He pulled down the zipper fastener of his jacket. As he did so, his fingers touched a metal badge pinned inside the jacket, and his face brightened. On the badge was written, Detective Number 30. I'll play the detective, John said to himself. I'll follow a thief. I can do that by myself. But who is there to follow? Just then he noticed a car parking by the side of the road, and he saw a man getting out of the car. Now this was something. The man waited for a moment, then walked up the street towards the small shop. John followed him, and when the man entered the shop, John was closely behind him. The man went to the corner of the shop where the telephone was. John bought a milk chocolate from the shop. If the man noticed him at all, he saw only a boy eating chocolate, and he did not know that the same boy was following him down the street. The man went to his parked car and did something strange. He got in, started his engine, then pulled up the handbrake and got out, leaving his engine running. Looking about, he quickly walked up the path to Mr. Stone's big house and went around to the back of the house. John watched very carefully. He was afraid to follow the man, but he wanted to see. On the street, there were some big empty boxes. John crept into one of them. Through the cracks, it was easy to see both the house and the car. He looked carefully at the license plate of the car. Suddenly, the front door of the house opened and a man came out. But it was not the same man who had gone in. That man had a smooth face with a big nose and he wore a hat. The man coming out had grey whiskers and wore a grey cap and was carrying a suitcase. It's not the same man, John said to himself. But just then the man passed close to his hiding place. John looked closely at him and he was very surprised. The man ran to the parked car, jumped in, released the handbrake and drove off. John came out of his box and looked after the car, eyes and mouth wide open. Just then there came a call. Hi, John. It was Billy. John ran towards him. Listen, Billy, I've... But Billy stopped him and said, Say, John, I had ice cream and then I went to see the film Tarzan. What a beautiful film. That's the fourth time I've seen it. The boys became interested in the story of the film and John forgot his own story. The next morning at breakfast, John was trying to think of some way to ask Daddy for some money. He wanted to see Tarzan. Daddy, who was reading the paper as he ate his breakfast, looked across at Mother. Some people broke into Mr. Stone's house yesterday. The family were away. A lot of silver and jewellery were taken. They seem to have carried the things away in a suitcase. Mr. Stone is offering a reward. John laid down his spoon. Would the reward be big enough for me to see Tarzan, Daddy? Don't be silly, son, answered Daddy. You don't understand. Mr. Stone is offering a reward to anyone who can help him find the gang that stole his things. Yes, I know, said John. But it wasn't a gang. It was just one man 
and he had a big nose and a hat when he went in, and when he came out, he had grey whiskers and a cap. Look here, son, said Daddy. If you really know anything about this, tell me. So John told him about Detective Number Thirty following the man and hiding in the box and everything. Well, said Daddy, I think I'd better call the police and tell them what you saw. Will I get the reward, Daddy? Asked John. But his father was already on the telephone. In a very short time, a car stopped in front of the house, and two big policemen came into the house. John felt a little afraid of them at first, but one of them smiled such a broad smile that John smiled back. So you are the young man who is going to help us catch this thief, are you? Asked the policeman. Tell us everything you saw. So John told his story again. Now. You didn't notice what kind of car it was, did you? Yes, said John. It was a dark green car, and it was very muddy. I also know the license number. John took out a piece of paper from his pocket. The number was written on it: B one three one four six six. It will be easy for us to pick up that car now, said the policeman. If we find it, we shall want you to come down to the station. The policeman hurried away. And John, seeing Billy across the street, called, "Say, Billy, do you want to go down to the police station with me? I'm going to get a reward big enough for us to go to the cinema and see Tarzan." In the afternoon, Daddy drove up and called for them. The boys were a little afraid when they entered the police station. An inspector was sitting behind a desk. There were half a dozen officers in uniform, and at one side stood a few other men. Which one of you boys is the detective? Asked the inspector. We both are, answered Bill. That is not real ones, of course, but play ones. John is number thirty, and I'm number eighteen. But it was John who followed the man yesterday. Well, John said the inspector. Look at those men and see if the man you followed yesterday is there. Yes, he is, answered John. It is that man with the big nose. So that's the man you followed, is it? But you said the man who came out of the house had grey whiskers and a grey cap. Yes, he did. But they are the same man," said John. "Now, how are you going to prove it? This man says his car was stolen yesterday, and he found it later." John grew suddenly shy. "You tell them, Billy." Billy pulled his hand from his pocket and showed some small blue seals. "You see, it's this way. We try to see how many people we can follow." And the one who follows the most people wins. I have these blue seals, and John has red ones. We try to stick one of these seals on the man we follow. That's what John did yesterday when we went close to the man in the shop. The officers roared with laughter. <laughs> what happened then? Asked the inspector. John continued the story. I thought it was a different man too, coming out of the front door. But when he passed near me, I saw the red seal on his coat that I had stuck. It may still be there. The two boys ran over behind the big-nosed man. Yes, there it is! Cried Billy, and the officers went up and looked too. The children seem to have caught you," said the inspector. "Now tell us where the things are." Yes, they have caught me," said the big-nosed man. But you policemen would never have got me without the children. They've got brains. Well, come on, boys, let's go," said Daddy. "Do I get the reward, Daddy?" asked John. "You'll surely get it," said a grey-haired gentleman. He took out a hundred-dollar note and gave it to John. "I'm proud of such fine young neighbors," he said, shaking hands with the boys. I hope you all carefully followed the story while it was being played for you.、Um, now we will see、uh, the paragraph, each paragraph of our story.、Um, John stood looking up and down the streets. He was unhappy. His friend Billy had gone to the dentist with his mother, and John could not think of anything interesting to do just by himself.、Uh, John. 
the main character there the very line its first word itself the name of john is given there and he is very unhappy what is the reason his friend is not with him what is the name of the friend billy where is billy billy had gone to dentist with his mother maybe he has some kind of tooth problem so he had to visit a dentist mother might have taken him to dentist so john had nothing to do he's uh, a not in a status not not at all interested in too unhappy very unhappy we will see he pulled down the zippers fasten of his jacket up and down as he did so his fingers touched a metal badge pinned inside the jacket and his face brightened inside there is a metal badge on the badge was written detective number 30 i will play the detective john said to himself i will follow a thief and i can do that by myself but who is there to follow yes since he is alone he wanted to entertain himself so he was restlessly pulling up and down his uh, jacket zip then he touched a badge inside what was written on that badge dictative number 30 so he got an idea uh, to play uh, just behave himself as a detective follow a thief and now the question whom should be followed we will see just then he noticed a car parking by the side of the road and he saw a man getting out of the car now this was something so he wanted to follow someone all of a sudden he had seen someone a car is parking there and came out someone he saw a man getting out of the car so this is something uh, freaky or something a uh, doubtful situation the man waited for a moment then walked up the street towards the small shop that man who got out of the car went to a shop john followed him and when the man entered the shop john was closely behind him uh, like a film he is following the so-called thief the man went to the corner of the shop where the telephone was john brought, bought a milk chocolate from the shop if the man noticed him at all he saw only a boy eating chocolate and he did not know that the same boy was following him down the street anyway john decided to uh, become a detective he wanted to follow a thief all of a sudden a person came by car and uh, like there we started following him if to dis, uh, disguise himself not he's not following him he bought a chocolate from milk chocolate from nearby shop and started even if that man look at him a boy simply eating a chocolate standing there but uh, he's following that person the man went to his parked car, car and did something strange he got in started his engine then pulled up the handbrake and got out leaving his engine running looking about he quickly walked up the path of mrs stone's big house and went around to the back of the house something strange that person he again got into the parked car he started then pulled the handbrake that means the engine is running and he got out of the car and he went to mr stone's big house yes if you are leaving a car you should switch off no it's in starting the car is switch on position john watched very carefully he was afraid to follow the man but he wanted to see on the street there was some big empty boxes john crept into one of them through the cracks it was easy to see both the house and the car he looked carefully at the license plate of the car uh, john carefully watched all these things a man what did he do he parked the car he started his engine pulled the handbrake again got out of the car then went to miss Stone's big house the car is there waiting for him being started now we will see so john was bit he has to be careful he was a bit scared also he got into one of the box nearby the street and got into that and he through a crack he can see both house and car and he carefully looked at the nice license plate number plate of the car he might have by heart the number by that time suddenly the front door of the house opened and a man came out yes all of a sudden the door of the house was opened but it was not the same man who had gone in a different man it is not the same man 
he, uh, somebody else is coming out. That man had a smooth face with a big nose. He, and he wore a hat. The man coming out had a grey whiskers and wore a grey cap and was carrying a suitcase. The man who went inside had a smooth face with a big nose and wore a hat. But the man who is coming out had a grey whiskers and wore a grey cap and he was carrying a suitcase also. He is not the same man, John said to himself. But just then the man passed close to his hiding place. John looked closely at him and he was very surprised. The man ran to the park car, jumped in, released the handbrake and drove off. All of a sudden, released the handbrake, boom, yes. So John looked closely at him and John got very surprised also. We will find out what made him surprised. John came out of his box and looked after the car, eyes and mouth wide open. Just then there came a call. Hi John! It was Billy. John ran towards him. Listen Billy, I have. But Billy stopped him and said, Say John, I had ice cream. And then I went to see the film. Tarzan. What a beautiful film. That's the fourth time I have seen it. The boys became interested in the story of the film. And John forgot his own story. Billy came there and told him, Wow. Well, while he had gone to see the dentist, he had ice cream. Now we got the reason why he has this dental tooth problems are there. And he had seen the film Tarzan for, for the fourth time. So they started explaining that story and so on. So John forgot his story. He was making a story by himself by this story. He was rather acting a story. But since Billy came and told all other stories, even John had forgotten that story. The next morning at breakfast, John was trying to think of something uh, some way to ask daddy for some money. He wanted to see Tarzan. Uh, whiskers means the hair growing on a man's face, especially on his cheeks and chin. We knew it. Um, the next morning, John wanted to get some money. He, wa he also, Billy told the other day that uh, he had seen the film Tarzan. John also wanted to see that film. So he wanted to get some money from, uh, some money from the father. So he was thinking, how could ask father for some money to see the film. Daddy, who was reading the paper as he ate his breakfast, looked across at mother. Some people broke into Mr. Stone's house yesterday. The family were away. A lot of silver and jewelry were taken. They seem to have carried the things away in a suitcase. Mr. Stone is offering a reward. John laid down his spoon. Would he reward a big be reward be big enough for me, see Tarson Daddy? All of a sudden, he was thinking about to get some money to watch a film. Now, father had read out what? The previous day, reading the newspaper, break while along with the breakfast, what did happen? Some people broke into Mr. Stone's house yesterday. The family were away. Family members were not there. A lot of silver and jewelry were taken away. They seem to have carried things in a suitcase. And the stone is, if someone is able to give some hints about it, John Stone is going to give a reward. Now John is asking what? Will that reward be big enough to watch if we take a film ticket for the Tarzan? No, he is going to get it, no? Don't be silly son, answered daddy. You don't understand. Mr. Stone is offering a reward to anyone who can help him find the gang that stole his, stole his things. What are you saying? He is telling an offering uh, for what? If someone is able to help him to find out who had stolen this silver and jewelry. Yes, I know, said John. But it wasn't a gang. It was just one man and he had a big nose and a hat. And he, when he went in and when we came out, he had grey whiskers and a cap. Here John says what? It was not a gang, only one person. When he went inside, he had a big nose and a hat. But when we came out, he had grey whiskers and a cap. He had seen it, or John. Look here, son, said Zadi. If you really know anything about this, tell me. Now the father also got doubtful. Ah, what this boy is telling? You know something really about? So John told him about detective number 30, following the man and hiding in the box and everything. Well, said Daddy, I think... I would better call the police and tell 
them what you saw so father now understood this boy had seen it and they think that it's better to call the police and tell everything to the police what had actually happened there will i get the reward daddy asked john but his father was already on the telephone john wanted to know only one thing whether he will get the reward or not uh, in a very short time a car stopped in front of the house and two big policemen came into the house john felt a little afraid of them at first but one of them smiled such a broad smile that john smiled back yes the policemen were so huge and big and john got a bit scared but one of the policemen smiled at him so john also gave a broad smile he's also happy um, so you are the young man who is going to help us catch the thief this thief are you asked the policeman john is it you who are going to help us wonderful tell us uh, tell us everything you saw so john told his story again yes again and again is the detective uh, uh, telling his story no yes we once explained to billy billy didn't um, was not ready to hear that one here father father then phoned the police now he is explaining everything to the police we will see whether this will help the policeman or not now you didn't notice what kind of car it was did you yes uh, now you didn't notice what kind of car yes sir john it was a dark green car and it was very muddy and i also know the license number i know the license number john took out a piece of paper from his pocket the number was written on it B one three one four six six. Yes, I know the color. I know the number and full of mud also. It will be easy for us to pick up that car now," said the policeman. "If we find it, we shall want you to come down to the station. Now it is very easy. You know the number, color, everything. So we will find out that car. So if you find out, you have to come to the station. Maybe in order to uh, confirm whether whether the same car or not." The policeman hurried away, and John, seeing Billy across the street, called, "Say, Billy!" Now the friend Billy came there. Billy, do you want to go down the police station with me? Would you love to come with me to the police station? I'm going to get a reward big enough for us to go to the cinema and see Tarzan. I am going to get a, such a big reward, and both of us, us can go together and watch the Tarzan once again. Hmm? Last time you went alone without taking me, no? Now it's a kind of revenge. I am going to watch the Tarzan with you, both of us going together. That's all. Very good boy this John is. In the afternoon, Daddy drove up and called for them. The boys were little afraid when they entered the police station. An inspector was sitting behind their desk. There were a half a dozen officers in the uniform. And at one side stood a few other men. Which one of you boys in the is the detective? asked the inspector. Yes. There are few police officers there. Few other men were there. They are in the police station with the father. They both of them went there, and the police inspector asked, "Among two boys, who is that? Did that tell?" Asked the inspector. We both are answered Bill. Always Bill told her both are. Uh, that's not real ones, of course, but play ones. John is number thirty, and I am number eighteen. We are not real detectives. We are playing. John is number thirty, and myself. Number eighty, but it was John who followed the man yesterday. But it was unluckily only thirty was there. Like our Dasan and Vijayan detectives here, you have two detectives. What uh, detective number thirty, John, and detective number eighteen, Billy. Or yesterday, unluckily, John who was following that strange man. Well, John said the inspector, look at those men and see if the man you followed yesterday is there. Look at all those men who are standing there and find out. Whether if you see that whether the man you followed last day is there or not? Yes, he is answered John. It is that man with the, the big nose. So that's the man you followed, is it? But you said the man who came out of the house had grey whiskers and grey cap. Yes, he did. But they are the same man, Sir John. Now, how are you going to prove it? This man says his car was stolen yesterday and he found it later. This man. But how can you prove that the same man came out? And this man is telling that his car was stolen yesterday, and now he found it late. And he found it later. Yes, how can we assume that uh, he is the real man? John grew suddenly shy. You tell them, Billy. 
Billy pulled his hands from his pocket and saw some blue seals. Uh, now John got a bit scared, so he's asking. Seal means a, a specially designed piece of paper with the glue on one side. You see, it is this way. We try to see how many people we can follow. And the one who follows the most people wins. I have these blue seals and John has red ones. We try to stick one of these seals on the man we follow. That's what John did yesterday. When he went close to the man in the shop, the officers roared with laughter. What happened then? Ask the inspector. All oh, big officers are there. Then these little boys are talking. Yes, so the, what is their, this number 30 and 18, their uh, usual competition, uh, our uh, 18 Billy had a uh, blue seals, if I am correct. Yes, and whereas John 30, literally has red ones. So they will stick this seal on each man. So one who managed to follow maximum number of people will win. That's the thing. <clears throat> so yesterday, while that man went to the telephone, um, this boy went to buy some milk chocolate. By that time, he managed to fix one sticker on that person. Yes. So what happened? Ask the inspector. They are so curious to know what had actually happened there. John continued the story. I thought it was a different man too, coming out of the front door. But when he passed near me, I saw the red seal on his coat that I had stuck. It may be, it may still be there. Sometimes that sticker may be still there. The two boys ran over behind the big nosed man. Yes, there it is, cried Billy. And the officers went up and looked to two. The children seem to have caught you, said the inspector. Now tell us where the things are. Yes. This John had stuck a red um, seal, sticker on that thief the other day, that man, just want to follow. Uh, but that still that seal is on his cot, even right now. So now inspector police asked the thief where the things are there. Yes, they have caught me, said the big nose man. But you policemen would never have got me without the children. They have got brains. They are, even the thief says, these boys have got brains. They are wise. Well, come on boys, let's go, said daddy. Do I get the reward, daddy asked John. Now there's innocent question from our John. Will I get the reward? You will surely get it, said a grey-haired gentleman. He took out a hundred dollar, not and gave it to John. Maybe that, who is that person who lost all the silver ions, the silver and jewelry and such things. If that grey-haired gentleman gave him a hundred dollar, not. I am proud of such fine young neighbors, he said, shaking hands with the boys. So, he is proud and thankful and grateful having such a wonderful neighbors. Now, we have an activity and at the end of the story, rearrange the main events of the story in the order in which they happened. The first one has been identified for you. So, first I will read what is identified. The first one is what? One day John saw a man parking his car and followed him into a shop. Now, I am going to read the rest thing. The first one, he saw the big nosed man who go around to the back of the house. He noted down the number of the car. The next morning, John his father noticed a newspaper report on the burglary in Mr. Stan's house. John's father took Billy and John to the police station. John's father called up the police and asked them to come home. A little later, he saw a man with a grave case carry a suitcase out of the house. The police found the burglar after obtaining useful information from John. John identified the burglar at the police station. He received a reward of of hundred dollar you have to do it you may have to read this story one or two times after this please number this activity in your literary reader itself now we have do you agree with the following statements say yes or no john was a full-time detective sticking a seal on the man's coat helped john notice that the man leaving mr stone's house was the same man who entered it the man left to the engine of his car running before entering the house because he wanted to make a quick getaway later. 
The report that John's father read in the newspaper said that the man who burgled Miss Thorne's house had been caught. John's father asked the police to come home so that he could tell them who the burglar was. Billy had already seen Thompson, but John had it. John found it difficult to identify the burglar in the police station because there were other men standing with the burglar. The grey-haired gentleman who gave John $100 was Mr. Stone. This activity you can do in just right yes or no. Only verify that uh, certain statements are wrong, or other statements are correct. So the, for the correct one you put yes and no. If any doubt you have, you have to read the story one more time. That will clarify the doubt. Now working pairs, when John identifies him, the burglar says, you policemen would never have got me without the children. Do you agree with the burglar? Hmm? Uh, since you want to appreciate those children, we have to agree with the, the burglar. Uh, which three words in this list describe John best and why? You can choose your words. Lucky, observant, intelligent, humble, polite, patient, organized, careful. Any number of words you can select. A good detective possesses certain qualities. Mention three or four of them. Dear students, uh, today's English class has come to an end. Definitely I will send you the notes and question answers. You have to read this uh, story a number of times. You should complete your notes. You have to write in your uh, handwriting copy book and photographs of both you have to send to me. I expect all of you have managed to collect a BBC textbook, workbook from the school. As, pos as soon as possible, you all should collect it. Uh, in coming English classes, I will be giving you worksheets and assignments from BBC also. Till then, we meet in English next English class. Dear students, take care. Thank you.